All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Philadelphia based uh, town hall. Uh, my name is Josh Black. I'm APFA's national secretary. I'm also a Philly based flight attendant and I've been with American for seven years now. Um, we are really excited to offer this session for you today. Um, this is the first of its kind for a base town hall. I'd like to thank Kim Caswinkle for her leadership and her drive to um, make this happen today. So in today's sessions, we have representation from each of our departments at national headquarters, and we also have your um, base representatives on to um, give you some really helpful information about what's going on with the job and uh, what's going on with things like negotiation, safety department, and um, anything along those lines. We're also here to answer any questions that you have. So we did have some questions that were submitted in advance. You are welcome, more than welcome, to submit any questions during this town hall. Um, you'll just hit the Q&A tab and submit your questions. As we go through the departments today and they give you um, information, feel free to ask any questions that you have and we'll go through and answer them. So uh, without further ado, I will go ahead and hand it over to Kim Caswinkle, Philadelphia based president. Hi everybody, um, thank you for joining. Um, and as Josh said, this is the first time we've all done this uh, as a base thing here. So we're gonna learn as we go, but I do wanna take a minute I think Josh forgot to mention this is recorded. And yes, Kim, that's correct. So yeah, thank you for mentioning that. This this session is recorded today. And uh, for, for any of your um, flying partners that weren't able to join it today, this will be going out via hotline. And um, anyone is welcome to watch it in your base. Thanks, Kim. Will it be behind the firewall or not? It'll be on your base page, yep. Okay, perfect, perfect, thank you. Um, and I also want to take an opportunity to thank all of the um, department leadership uh, for joining us to be available to the members. It's not very often we get to do all of this. So I do want to thank that. And I definitely want to thank Josh because I know he's really busy. So for him to take the time to do this is great. Um, I would like to um, give you just a minute to have, uh, I would like to say Tracy's not here. She will be joining. She is currently um, at the airport in a meeting. So she will be joining um, as soon as she's available. Um, that will be Tracy Montaneri, um, the Philadelphia Vice President. And I'll let Dan and John introduce themselves. Hey there, uh, Dan Sam, I'm a uh, base uh, council rep here in Philadelphia. I've been flying for, uh, for 25 years. Um, I've been involved with the union work for over 20. So um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, definitely if you guys have any questions, uh, Make sure you uh, you fill out the chat and we'll go ahead and answer those for you. Hey everybody, I'm John Pratt. I'm a base flight, uh, base flight attendant here in Philadelphia. I've been flying for uh, 38 years, I guess it is, 1984. I don't know, I don't do the math anymore. Um, but I am a base council rep also here in Philadelphia. My um, specialty is all of the six systems that we use for bidding our schedules from PBS, Rota, Rota D, TTS, UBL, uh, ETB. If ever you have any questions about uh, an award or how to bid for something, please don't hesitate to give me a call or shoot me an email. I'll be happy to assist. Thanks, John. And John, do you mind uh, turning your camera on so we can see your beautiful face? I see him. Do you see him? Okay, for some reason I wasn't able to put his Yeah, my video camera is going on. All right. Um, well, there's an error on my end then. Thank you, John, and thank you, Dan, for um, for, for the introductions. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I do want to talk about a few things that we're dealing with at the base before we go into um, the rest of what we're going to talk about today. So as many of you know, we've moved to, um, or we didn't, but the company has moved to this attendance managers program. And we are seeing it, they're coming down hard. I don't know how else to say it on this attendance. So you really need to be mindful of your points. You can find it on my view. If you have questions, um, reach out to us, reach out to the attendance manager. We are also seeing um, a lot of uh, POs or personal days being denied by crew scheduling and then being referred to the attendance manager and they're still denying it. So if you're having difficulties getting a, a personal day, 
reach out to us and let us know because we I have filed a, a base grievance on this. Um, we don't believe they're following their policy or the contract, so we definitely need to be made aware if you are struggling getting a PO. Um, the attendance policy actually requires um, level two and final warning meetings with your managers. So for some reason, the company has now put that onus on the flight attendants. So if you don't contact them within the 10 days of receiving your letter, they're just going to keep moving on. So um, please watch your mail, watch your email. If you are you know, close on your points, watch your my view, reach out to us um, you know, so we can help you with with possible options to mitigate. If you think you got a missed trip that's not valid or a late report that's not valid, you need to be on top of that right away because FOSS only has a six week memory, four week memory, whatever it is, and we can't go back. So it's really hard to unring that bell and have those mitigated. Um, the next thing I wanna bring up is our, um, for those of you serving reserve, reserve not in position for assignment. Um, we've seen a major uptick about this, and we do have some of our regional reps on who are going to touch on this a little bit later. But the bottom line is, if you are not in a position to accept an assignment with two, within two hours while serving a RAP, then you are, you're not in your call-out window. You're not where you should be in order to get to work. The company, if you have a triggering event, such as a late call-out, a late sick, they will do a travel audit and they will compare that to your reserve schedule. Um, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We've seen a lot of terminations and um, it, it's we've seen more terminations than we have seen returns back to work. So um, I'll let the SBA team talk about that a little bit later. Um, meetings with your managers. Um, everything now is a meeting regardless of what it is, so please Remember your right to representation. I know it's, um, you know, everybody's time is precious, but we're here for you. We're available Monday through Friday. If you need after hours of the weekend, please reach out to us. We can try to make it work. Um, if flight service is available, we'll do what we can. Um, but it is important that you have that representation because it's, again, it's really hard to go back and unring that bell. They've issued discipline and we weren't there and now you're calling saying, oh, I got this. So please, exercise your right to representation and give us a call and uh, we'll be happy to go in and and support you and uh, you know within that meeting. Um, another thing I want to bring up COVID is on the rise again and we all know there is no more pandemic leave in um, for flight attendants except a couple of states that doesn't apply to us. Um, if you if you do test positive for COVID and you think you were exposed at work, um, we are asking you file an IOD. Um, it's most likely going to be denied, but at least there's a record of it. Um, we also ask that you if you if you are comfortable enough to file a report, we do have a COVID reporting form on the APFA.org website because there's no way for us to track this trend and to see if it's rising again in order for us to be able to keep go back to the company and say, hey, they should not be charged points for these sick calls because they are um, being exposed at work as frontline workers. Um, the masks are off. I mean, people are, are getting COVID every day. I'm sure everybody on this call knows somebody who has COVID right now. So, if you're comfortable enough, please fill out this form of your COVID exposure form so we can try to collect some data and we can see a trend on whether or not this is, is spiking up to uh, um, high levels or higher levels than before. Um, and the last thing I want to add, which I know Josh is not on his thing, but our new hires. So <laughs> it's starting to slow down in Philly, but they are going to continue hiring through the end of the year. So Philly just has a few more classes that we're going to see people and then we don't have any. Um, but then they'll start up again in the fall. So hopefully we'll see more then, but um, you are going to continue to see a lot of our new flight attendants out there and um, we welcome them. We're excited to have them. So, um, you know, like I said, it's it's slowing down here in Philly, but they will still be um, hiring system wide through the end of the year. 
So I think that's it for me. Thank um, you, unless Kathy. there's any questions on that. I'm going to share uh, this slide real quick with everyone. Um, we encourage you to take a screenshot of this. This is the contact numbers for um, your base and for any bidding assistance. So if you are on your phone or on your computer, take a quick screenshot of this so that you can um, keep this whenever you need to use it. All right, so. Uh, next on our agenda today, we're going to move over to thank you, Kim, for all of that really helpful information. Um, next, we're going to move over to our departments. Um, each department has a little bit of information that uh, we think we'll find that we think you'll find helpful um, and some information about where we currently stand in negotiations and uh, other things like that. So we're going to start with negotiations. Um, I know it's a huge topic, so we're going to start with that and go to Brian Morgan, who is one of our negotiators. Go ahead, Brian. Good morning, Philadelphia. Thank you, Josh. Um, uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, um, I'm here in Dallas today. We're actually uh, meeting with the company um, and uh, at the table today um, and over the next couple of days. Um, I just wanted to uh, um, give you some current information of where we are and what we're doing. Um, currently today, um, we are in discussions. Uh, we're passing back and forth um, with the company. Um, two sections that we are currently working on, uh, which is section 11, hours of service. In addition to that, we're also passing back and forth uh, section 14, which is international. Um, in discussions that um, uh, are currently um, in progress um, was uh, section uh, 16, which is deadheading. Um, we uh, we have uh, two weeks ago, uh, we did pass to the company um, sections eight uh, vacation and section nine sick leave. Uh, we are waiting for responses from the company on those two sections currently. Um, and I'd like to refer to you to uh, the web page. Um, if you have an opportunity, um, our latest update, update 12 uh, for negotiations um, has been put out in the hotline. Um, those are on the APFA web page on the national page. Um, in addition to that, under the negotiations tab on the web page um, is uh, the most recent and updated information on the progress of where we are. Um, the one wonderful thing that uh, we have been uh, progressing through on these negotiations is the uh, um, the information that we have been putting out on this. Um, we have been as transparent as we can possibly be to make sure that our membership is up to date, uh, is clear on what what discussions are happening and where we are in those in that progress. Um, and as you can see on the uh, page here, Josh is posting um, the information and this is the web page and shows you uh, the different information and how to access it and what what that uh, um, what it'll look like and, and the information that it will provide. Um, we did get a few uh, questions sent in um, from the town hall. Um, Josh, I'm not sure how you wanted to ap approach those or. Um, sure. Uh, yeah, just thanks, Brian. Um, the first question that we have, let me pull that up. Is seeing Delta and United are getting boarding pay, are you going to start paying flight attendants for boarding pay, seeing we don't get paid anything at all? OK, um, it's a good question. Um, the uh, just to clarify, uh, United is not getting boarding pay at this time. Um, it was in their opener. Um, Delta, um, as of uh, May 1st, um, they have begun to do so um, as a uh, clarification point. Um, we uh, here at AA uh, during our opener, uh, we were the first to put in uh, boarding pay. That was part of our opener and has been a part of our opener to the company um, since the uh, beginning of our negotiations process. Um, and it was uh, with Delta's um, recent add um, to their uh, boarding pay um, that has made the uh, boarding pay discussion um, a little bit more prominent. Um, the the item itself has not come to the table as of yet. Um, we will be working on that and moving forward to discuss the prog our process on how we would look at it. Um, we are certainly looking at, at United's uh, and in addition to that, Alaska, 
JetBlue and Southwest are all putting forward uh, boarding pay requests. Um, and we're looking at everybody's offerings uh, to see uh, what the other carriers are looking at before uh, we place our uh, proposition to the company um, on the table so that we can make sure that we are um, industry uh, or if not industry leading um, in that regard. Um, as of right now, um, you you don't get specifically a boarding pay um, and uh, um, the process of um, the avenue of uh, um, hourly rates uh, based off of your uh, your flying time, but you do get um, a percentage during the, the boarding process. It starts actually when you check in um, and or sign in for your trip, um, but um, we certainly understand that boarding pay is a critical item. That's one of the hardest part of the entire trip, um, so it's certainly something that uh, we take very seriously and we are approaching the company on. Thanks, Brian. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question we have is, what are we doing to look at uh, rotating reserve? Um, and what are we going to be doing about the rotation in, in uh, negotiations? OK, um, we are uh, reserve section. Actually, the team internally right now is discussing uh, reserve. Uh, that has not been brought to the company and to the table as of yet. Um, we anticipate probably um, May, um, June at the latest, uh, that the reserve section will be brought up for uh, a pass to the company. Um, reserve and the rotation in of itself is something that we are looking at. Um, it is, uh, as we all know, the reserve situation um, is it, it, it's a problem. Um, so in that at that regard, we are looking at uh, the potential to alter the current rotation and looking at a, a better format in it. Um, now, I know a lot of people have said, um, you know, which we'll goes to straight reserve. That's you know, that'll fix it um, based on the information that we uh, we reach out through our surveys, um, our meetings with uh, uh, our base meetings, um, in addition to the uh, road shows that we've conducted, um, that is not the overall uh, prospect um, that our membership is looking for. Um, that's not something that they themselves want. Um, so uh, as, as, a, as regards to just going to a pure straight reserve, um, that is an unlikely scenario. Um, but the rotation um, and uh, advancing or increasing the number of years that uh, straight reserve may be placed in the rotation, um, that is something that we are considering. Um, and again, that section has um, is an internal discussions right now and has not been brought to the table. Um, but the moment uh, that that information um, is uh, brought to the table and we're able to uh, give you additional information on that, um, that will come up to our website site and we will certainly be putting out updates um, through our hotline system. Thank you so much for the information, Brian. Um, OK, so next we have the contract action team. Philip Delahunty uh, is part of our contract action team leadership and we're going to hand it over to him to talk about that. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Philip Delahunty. I'm a Miami based flight attendant. Um, I will uh, admit I have a bit of a crush on the Philadelphia base. Um, we've done eight uh, very successful events up in Philadelphia. Big kudos to Kim Caswinkle, your base president, who was instrumental in making those happen. Um, also Kai Kamaltz, who you may be familiar with. Um, he's our point person up in Philadelphia. Um, you'll see him looking perfect, walking through the terminals with these red badge backers. Um, that we're, we're designed to put you all in contact with that negotiations website, those updates. Um, we've got QR codes on the back um, and we ask everybody to sign up for the contract action team um, as the negotiations process uh, heats up, just like Brian talked about. Um, we're going to have uh, even more events in every base around the system. We want to make sure that all of our flight attendants are aware of where to find the most up to date information. Um, so that there's uh, an absolute minimum, if not no uh, jump seat rumors spreading around about what's going on in negotiations. The more that we can be together, um, united uh, in facts and in direction, um, you know, the better it bodes for us at the table. 
um, and, and we want everybody to sign up. So if you haven't already done so, it's really simple. You can see that page uh, on the screen share right now, thanks to Josh. Um, we've made the sign up uh, even more streamlined. It only takes about two seconds. You'll get a confirmation email, and then when there's going to be events, things like that um, in your base, um, that's how we're gonna be reaching out to you. Um, I'm always available. If you have any questions about contract action, you can reach out to me, P-D-E-L-A-H-U-N-T-Y at APFA.org. Um, or you can submit um, a, a web form uh, request on the APFA website. Thank you so much for that information, Phil. I know it's a really great way to get involved at your base and to uh, get out there and help our flight attendants. OK, so next we're going to move on to our safety department. We have Heather Jacquet, and she'll be talking about uh, a couple of important items from, from them. Hi, on to you, Heather. Thank you, Josh. Um, like Josh said, my name is Heather Jack Hay. I work in the safety and security department at APFA. I've been doing so for about six years now. And um, we just wanted to bring to your attention some of the hot topics we're experiencing at this time. Um, we've seen and had a staggering number number of KCM violations this year and currently run the risk of potentially losing KCM access for the entire airline. Um, the most frequent violations include using KCM for personal international travel and being prohibited and bringing prohibited items through KCM. We do kindly ask that you check the prohibited items list on the KCM website to ensure that all your belongings are compliant and as as a best practice, just check your work bags routinely before you start each trip to make sure that you are in compliance. Um, if you are caught using KCM for personal international travel, the TSA can suspend you from the program for a year and may also charge a civil penalty as well. Um, and like I said previously, um, they're even looking at excluding our airline from the program because there has been so many infractions with American Airlines employees. We also want to bring to your attention um, that in London Heathrow and Charles de Gaulle, um, we are seeing lag violations um, and they're at an all time high. 90% of the violations stem from have not having items in a separate LEG bag. So the Ziploc baggie all of them need to be zipped and contained. Even if you have something as small as Flonase that has one spray left or chapstick, um, it needs to be in the Ziploc baggie or you are in violation. Um, we know the London Heathrow requirements are different from KCM rules, so it is critical and crucial that you check the destination folder in the EFB to make sure your items are compliant. And also as a best practice, you might wanna consider using one bag specifically for items you plan to consume in flight and another uh, for the LAGs. That way, when you get to the checkpoint, you do not cause a delay by having to search for your items there. Um, we're also seeing multiple violations at the Charles de Gaulle Airport as well. Um, these violations are so high, in fact, um, that American Airlines is are currently bringing in some flight attendants if they've had multiple violations um, in to speak with their managers. And there is a potential that they will be sending managers to London Heathrow to, I guess you would say, supervise um, the security process if this does um, begin to start up, there will be a member of the APFA safety and security team there as well, um, but we just wanted to make sure you were all aware of what is currently going on. And that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heather, for that update. Um, all right, so moving on to the SBA department, which stands for System Board of Adjustment. Uh, the System Board of Adjustment is under the um, Office of the National Vice President. And from the department, we have Regional Reps Grace Allen and Alan Boswell on. 
Hi there, everyone. Uh, my name is Alan Boswell, and I'm the regional representative for Philadelphia and DC. I've been doing union work for over three decades. I'm a 33 year flight attendant, um, and I'm currently based in Dallas. Um, there are seven regional reps. Uh, Grace Allen, who's also on the call, is one of the, one of the regional reps. She covers uh, DFW, but we do assist uh, all each other in covering all the bases. One of the primary functions of the regional rep is handling termination grievances. And as Kim talked about earlier, um, the number one, overwhelmingly the number one issue that we are seeing across the system is reserve at a position or reserve at a base. Um, the majority uh, of them have been um, uh, caused by there's been some triggering event. Uh, uh, usually what it is is a late sick call after assignment and um, they like Kim talked about, they go back and pull your travel records and try to match those up with your either um, your wraps and you know, were you within um, a, a two hour period to get to work? Um, and I will tell you that there's been almost a zero tolerance when it comes to these issues when they've been shown to be out of position and termination has been occurring um, as I, we talked about all over the system. And while we've been able to get some um, of, the, of the jobs back, it is much like putting toothpaste back in the tube. The, 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 the timeline to get people back is very long. And we don't want to see anybody losing health care and um, and obviously pay during this period of time. So please make sure that when you are on a wrap that you are within two hours to get to the airport. Um, and uh, the other issue that um, we see a lot that we handle a lot is uh, either contract or scheduling grievances that don't get resolved on the local level. One thing that can assist these uh, grievances is having screenshots of anything that's occurring to you um, with your trip, in Dex, in Crew Portal, to you know, make sure that you have documentation for these things. Because as as Kim talked about earlier, when uh, time is the enemy of all grievances, and and documentation begins to disappear. So any screenshots, anything that you have, is going to assist in making sure that we get you paid for the scheduling and contract violations that occur. The last thing that we'll cover is um, Philadelphia has seen. Um, a lot of probationary fly tents, new hires coming into the base, which has been really great. Um, unfortunately, with that, we've seen a lot of probationary fly tenants that the company refers to it as being released from the program. What they're saying is that you're being terminated. And this has been everything from some performance issues, such as not being in base um, and uh, you know, sick related issues, but also behavior on overnights. We've seen um, some some unfortunate situations that have come back to haunt the flight attendants on probation. Uh, just so that you know, uh, when it comes to uh, probationary flight tents, you have uh, access to the entire contract in terms of uh, 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 you know, the pay and scheduling and everything else. The one thing we cannot do is if you are released from the program or terminated, that we cannot file grievance based on your termination if you are on probation. For the, so for those six months, if the company makes the decision to go ahead and, and terminate you or release you from the program, there is nothing that the union can do. So please make sure that you are on time you know, looking the part, don't give them any excuse to want to uh, question their their decision to employ you. All right. If you have any questions, I really I'm here to answer them as well. Anything you want to add, Grace? Um, no, just wanted everyone to know that I am the regional representative for uh, Dallas. Um, however, I am a 26 year flight attendant based in Philadelphia. So if you see me out on a line and you have a question, um, feel free. Uh, Alan is actually your representative, but like he said, we all work together. So any problem that we have in one base, we share that information so that it could be spread across. So um, I will let you know as a probationary flight attendant, one of the things that I'm hearing because I do try to fly at least one trip a month just to stay connected. Um, I have a philosophy and I tell all new hire flight attendants, on time is late, 15 minutes early is on time. 
the company is not playing when it's coming to releasing our probationary flight attendants. So please don't go through all that work and um, lose your job over something that is within your control. So that's it. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Grace, and thank you, Alan, uh, both for the really helpful information. Next, we have Marty McMillan, our scheduling chair, and Jeff Peterson, our contract chair. Um, they're going to be talking about their departments. Hello, hello. Um, I'm Jeff Peterson, uh, Charlotte-based flight attendant, uh, APFA national contract chair. Um, just wanted to talk about a couple of items. The company put out a CCI message yesterday regarding the ordering of EFBs. Um, the EFB or the new tablet is um, the cutover to the new tablet is June 15th. It's the hard cutover. So if you haven't ordered it yet, they set the deadline of June 8th for ordering to make sure that it arrives in time for you to set it up prior to the June 15th cutover. Um, additionally, the, um, the second quarter web based training is due on June 20th. So just wanted to remind you to get that done prior to the deadline there. Hi, I'm Marty McMillan. I'm the APFA National Scheduling Chair. Um, we are sending out a hotline today at noon and it's regarding uh, the discontinuation of courtesy calls. We know the courtesy calls went away June 2nd, but what we've seen are a lot of issues with flight attendants acknowledging their ROTA assignments. And we started hearing about that uh, last Monday. And so we've been investigating everyone. We've sent every single one that we've gotten over to the company. If you're getting a missed trip for, and they're telling you you did not acknowledge your ROTA assignment by 1030 at night, uh, we want to hear about it and we will send it over to the company for investigation. Uh, if you are uh, able to possibly do a screen record of your acknowledging and then you subsequently get a mistrip, send us that video. That would be super helpful in helping track down what's causing the issue. Uh, so just make sure you're using uh, your crew portal acknowledge button versus the CCI, mobile CCI, at least for the interim. Uh, also, we wanted to talk a little bit about summer flying. Uh, we know that there was a huge increase in hours between May and June, and we expect to see more of the same for July flying as well. Uh, not another increase, but just what we've seen in June, we expect to see the same for July. So just want to give everybody uh, a heads up about that. And um, you know, we're hoping that we don't see all the men's that we've seen, but we do expect that the flying will be, you know, high lying averages, at least for the interim. And I think you're um, we did want to talk about um, some the bidding tips. I wanted to give a shout out to John Pratt there in Philly. He's been an amazing resource for your base for the scheduling systems and for PBS in particular. And we have this week in particular, we've heard some questions about uh, PBS bidding for reserves and coming you know, from some new hires who um, may or may not be receiving correct information. So I did want to point out that John made some great, did two town halls actually. He did one for the Philly base back in December and then came down here at headquarters and did another one nationally in January. So if you have any questions about reserve bidding or need any assistance, I saw, you know, we, Josh shared the screen earlier with his phone number. You can always bug him. But if you, uh, before you call him, if you've reviewed the town halls and the videos, those are great resources for, um, for bidding uh, for those who are on reserve. Great, thank you guys. Uh, anything else from 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 y'all? Just checking our notes. I think we covered everything. <laughs> right. Right. You mentioned uh, the I town can, hall. I'm going to share my screen real quick and show them how to find that um, reserve that PBS one. Yes. So if you navigate to the APFA page under the bases, you'll go to the Philly base page. And down, down, down at the bottom, uh, this is the uh, reserve bidding that John Pratt and Dan Sampy, Kim and I put on. Um, this is a really great video to watch if, if uh, to help refresh you on um, PBS bidding for reserve. OK, so Josh, now excuse me, there's a couple questions in the chat for Marty and Jeff. Do you want to do that now or come back to them? Um, sure, we can do those now. That's that's good. The first one, uh, Philly has a reserve percentage for June around 20%. These are slow season winter numbers. 
where is the company getting these outrageous percentages? What data are they claiming to use? And what is currently reserved SIP call percent if that's what they're using? So we would like to know what data they're using as well. They claim it's sick leave data um, as well as other things, yet we haven't really been able to nail them down as to exactly what other data they are using. Um, we do get a sick report. We're not seeing anything that would lead us to believe that there's a reason for such high reserve numbers. Um, we have, and Kim has been a very strong advocate for Philly um, about the numbers just don't make sense. They're not adding up. We advocated very hard on the, the staffing call for June um, to reduce the number of reserves and increase the number of line holders, which would make a lot more sense because it would also lower the line average. Um, and basically that was met with no response from them at all. So, you know, it's something we continue to push for every single month. We we just are not understanding the high reserve numbers at all. Do you have anything you want to add? Nope, you, okay. you both do it very well. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you for that information. Um, the next one we have is the lack of new hires not coming to Philly, a sign of the future for things in Philly. There has been no growth and it feels that AA sees no future for Philly. It feels like a painful slow death here. Has the company given <laughs> any information for the plans here in Philly? Can I speak to them? I, I mean, they haven't shared anything with us as far as any plans for, you know, like network planning for Philly. We are continuing to see new hires come into Philly, so that's always good news. You know, fresh faces and 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 numbers help do help the reserve numbers because those, you know, the new hires are going to be on straight reserve for the first or subject to straight reserve for the first 12 months. So that is. Thankfully, bringing a little bit of relief, but not quite enough. But yeah, we don't have any specific specific information for the, the Philly plan going forward. OK, great. This next question we have, I think Kim is going to start uh, start out on the answer and then um, Jeff, Marty and Brian, feel free to hop in at any point. Why are we seeing a speaker reduction only in Philly for Venice? There are plenty of speakers to cover. Um, we understand that the language and contract is vague. Why did APFA close the section without addressing the language? Up to two does not mean one, specifically when all other routes and other bases except when a speaker shortage is reported having two speakers or three. Um, so this, we have addressed this with the company. Um, so most flight attendants go to web roster and they look at how many flight attendants are in the base, whether they're purser or speakers, whatever the case may be. So when you look at web roster, yeah, it shows, but I don't know, last I checked, I think it was 36, 37 Italian speakers. What it doesn't show you is how many of those have a dual qualification. It doesn't show you how many of those are going to be on reserve. It doesn't show you how many of them are not active, meaning they're could be out on an IOD, could be out on a medical, could be out on, you know, for whatever reason. It does not show you how many of those speakers have vacation. So they look at all of those factors and determining the staffing. And the staffing, the contract language does say a maximum up to two. And that could mean one or none based on their staffing needs. So, um, they have told us they, I'm trying to think how many they roughly need. I think it's 12 or 14 for to staff with two daily is what the average is, I think, but don't quote me on that. But I have a few other people who are more of an expert on this to talk about what that does in the PBS system and Brian can address the other piece um, about the contract. But we we have asked about it. We will continue to ask about it. Um, we know it's important and um, we will uh, continue to do that. And I'll let Marty and Jeff tag on if I missed anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it is important to note that also they can't plan on people, you know, they can't predict bidding behavior. So if someone mm -hmm. bids high, that's great. And that, you know, does take trips, you know, that sucks up some of the open time, but they can't assume that anyone is going to bid high. So bidding behavior also is going to factor in there. So they're going to make an assumption or they're going to make their calculations based on 
you know, an average, you know, the line average, how many speakers there are and how many trips there are. So they can't take into consideration that some will bid high, you know, to, to take up more trips. Exactly. So I think that's an important piece there is that they, you know, the calculations are based on, you know, an average and not necessarily on the actual bidding behavior because that could change that could fluctuate every single month based on all the factors that Kim just spoke to vacation right. training you know any sort of medical IOD other leave um, and then also another thing that the web roster doesn't reflect as transfers so someone could be showing as you know based in Philly you know currently but they're not actually going to be based in Philly for the month that we're bidding for and and also for transfers in we won't see that reflected until you know the the actual transfer occurs so those are things that will factor into the pbs bid and award right thanks and to add on to what said manpower planning looks at all of those inactive flight attendants for whatever reason and determines the number of speakers that are going to be allocated um per per trip per month um, for the month okay great brian do you want to touch the uh touch on the negotiation side of this Sure, thank you. Um, in addition to what Marty and Jeff uh, and Kim has uh, um, uh, noted, um, in the discussions at the, the table, um, the company had uh, held the language as it was. Um, both sides of the table um, felt that the language was um, was acceptable within uh, the parameters that it are in. Um, and in the, the question or the statement of, you know, up to two, um, the, the there are flights currently, as Kim noted, um, that are operating that have flown with with zero. Um, the uh, um, an example of that um, has been Athens um, due to, uh, as Marty and Jeff pointed out, due to shortages in other uh, other areas um, within manpower planning. Um, the up to three um, that the third uh, uh, language speaker on uh, that aspect uh, strictly applies to our Asian markets. Um, so it, it, at the table and in, in discussions, um, the, the language of itself um, was agreed to by both sides um, of the table in this regard that uh, the number of uh, speakers that are on there uh, were provisionally acceptable. Um, some of the uh, problems that we had seen that um, we we did address uh, was the fact that there was a reduction of um, uh, the number of flight attendants on board um, overall um, that that may be some of the greater problem that that we're having in in our discussions um, is the the number of flight attendants and the reduction of uh, crew members on board but um, again as i noted you know it wasn't uh, the number that are, are there in the language that are currently exist uh, was deemed as an acceptable item Thank you, Brian. Okay. And Josh, if I, I just can I just add one more thing on the sure, on absolutely, the, please do. Thing? So it's we do pay attention also to how many trips end up open at the end of PBS. So mm -hmm. if if you know once it processes you know that that particular sequence, if there's not a speaker, if the speaker complement is not met, that trip will be held out. It's not going to go to a non-speaker simply because there's not a speaker being you know available to take that trip. So then we see. You know, it fluctuates every single month how many trips we see open for speakers, but we do see them in, in Philly in particular with Italian speakers. We see trips being left in open time at the end of PBS processing because there's simply not, you know, en either enough speakers or just the, the math doesn't add up to award all of the trips. Right. Great. We are going to move on now to um, our health department. We have Haley Epperjesse, one of our health department reps. Hi, Philly. Um, I'm Haley Brewer, actually, now. I recently married. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. My email still stays the same. Um, I'm one of the health reps here at APFA, and I work directly under Kathy Sharp. She's our national health chair, but I'm filling in for her today. So um, I'm a Dallas-based flight attendant. I was hired in 2014, so I've been flying for about eight years, and I started working for APFA in 2015, so not long after, they sucked me right up. So um, we cover a relatively wide spectrum here in the health department, but our biggest areas are things like benefits and that would cover like open enrollment, spending accounts, issues with carriers. But even bigger than that, most days I feel is FMLA and medical leave. So the health department is here to help navigate your time off as well as help you understand the medical and administrative ins and outs of the leaves. So um, we would be your point person on anything like that. 
I know that you guys are all aware that the company has transitioned to a new online application for processing that's called absence tracker that rolled out March 21st um, and it's been kind of a doozy we're, we're still learning as well but it's a much more simplified process for flight attendants but likely a bit of a learning curve with anything new so I know Josh was going to pull up a uh, share screen so that we can show you how to utilize absence tracker within JetNet and um, we'll navigate you guys to the resources to show you how to use that so Josh has pulled up JetNet right here and he's going to navigate. The first stop is team member services, the tab right across the top. And then within that, um, as you would expect, it's leaves and returns. Oh, oh. Log in. And then from this page, before directing you to absence tracker, I wanted to ask Josh to scroll to the bottom of this leaves and returns page. So at the very bottom here where you see additional resources, it's actually a drop down menu. And right beneath the company has loaded lots of resources here to help you navigate and understand absence tracker. So there's a video right there. Um, there's leave of absence, understanding your leave within flight service. I would say the biggest help on this is the video walkthrough, how to create a case in absence tracker and how to submit your documents and confirm receipts. Um, so we get a lot of calls around all of these things, just general use of absence trackers. So um, we want to give you guys the knowledge to have the power to learn how to navigate it yourself. But of course, if you get in there and it's still confusing, please give us a call. We're happy to help. So Josh can scroll up and prior to scrolling down to additional resources, if you're just trying to go directly to absence tracker, you would go this route. So team member services, leaves and returns, and then open the flight service folder here. So this is going to take you to the landing page for your individual account on absence tracker. Um, and from this point, this is where you would utilize the videos or the other resources the company has provided. But um, just as simple as this, requesting a new case right here. And one thing to note, um, I think what we're seeing a lot of confusion on besides just all the general issues with absence tracker is people are confused about intermittent FMLA. So you only need to come to absence tracker when you're requesting or creating an entirely new case. So let's say you're someone that has an intermittent FMLA on file every year. Well, at that end point, we always have to request a new intermittent FMLA. So absence tracker is where we come to request an entire new FMLA so that way it can run through the administrative and medical process to eventually be approved, hopefully. Um, but you still will go to comply 365 to process any intermittent FMLA recode requests. Great. So Josh, I wanted to navigate one more place. I did send Kim an email, so I know she can share that resource. Um, but on that landing page where there were additional resources, do you mind going back there just really quick? I should have highlighted this before. Sure. Let me get back to that page. So we had a conversation prior to um, jumping on the live town hall, and I know there is a lot of confusion surrounding whether or not fax is still an option to upload your FMLA paperwork. It is, however, the company is hoping that we'll gear everything toward this online application, which truthfully is going to be a lot easier for us as flight attendants just utilizing online. You know, we're not going to be stuck in the old world of American where everything is done by snail mail and waiting on faxes. However, if you are someone who may just not have the ability to get on here to absence tracker, you can still fax. So if you'll scroll to the bottom, Josh, and under additional resources, Will you select how to submit your documents and confirm receipt? So the healthcare provider form itself should have the fax number, but on this resource as well, if you'll scroll down, Josh, there is a fax number right here. So if anybody wanted to take a screenshot of that, um, like I said, it should be on the form, but I just wanted to highlight that. Perfect. Thank you for bringing that to everyone's attention for yeah. the uh, see you are welcome thank you thank you okay great now we're going to move on to the iod department we have our iod chair belia pexson hi everyone um i am belia pexson the national iod chair i'm based in dallas and i've been a flight attendant for 37 years and we're i have been doing union work for the last 15 years so moving on to IODs, there are a couple important things to know 
about being injured at work, and that is to report your injury as soon as possible, but state law allows you 21 days to file an IOD. And Josh, I do apologize. If we can go to my department page, sure. we'll have all the information that they would need, you know, to file the IOD, who their contacts are. Um, in Philadelphia, you have to treat uh, with an approved clinic or healthcare provider for 90 days. After the 90 days, you can choose any physician uh, that accepts workers' comp. Also, there are waiting periods in Philly, well, in every state. Uh, Philly has a statutory waiting period of seven days. So the first seven days will come out of your sick bank or you go unpaid, and then compensation begins on the eighth day of disability. Uh, there is also a retroactive period. So if you're out more than 14 days, uh, if sick time is used, it would be restored and Sedgwick, which is the workers' comp insurance company, will uh, compensate you for those first seven days. Um, Sedgwick is the workers' comp insurance company. Um, they will, once your claim is accepted, uh, Sedgwick will administer all the medical treatment and lost wages. Uh, let's see what else. Um, Salary continuance, it is an offset uh, from workers comp. So with the salary continuance, it is paid up to six months and the combination of the two between uh, with Sedgwick and American, uh, the combination cannot exceed 110 hours of pay. And the language is in the contract under section 27 D6. But when we go to I think, Josh, can we scroll up a little bit on the department sure. page? Let me get that up. OK. Further? Further. I think we need to go ahead and. Uh, OK, that's good. So we do have a couple departments that um, American you would be contacted by American and that would be the AA injury on duty admin team and a lot of uh, flight attendants get confused with that uh, the company's IOD admin team with APFA so if you do hear from the IOD department it will typically be from the company and also if we scroll down it explains light duty and also I have an IOD packet on, on uh, online which will give you all the contact numbers, how to file an IOD, uh, all the state specifics for uh, Philadelphia, and there is also contractual language. Now I saw this at the bottom, Belia. We've got the rights and responsibilities for, oh sorry, yeah, Pennsylvania. Yes. yes. Um, is, th is this helpful for them too? Yes, that form will be mailed to them either email or mail to the flight attendant and it is specifically for Philadelphia. And right. well, uh, Pennsylvania. And that's about it. Um, anything else to share, Dahlia? Yes, uh, just the light duty restricted duty does mean that they're off work and they have to keep in mind that lost time begins the day the medical provider removes them from work, not necessarily the date of injury. Great. Well, thank you for all that helpful information, Delia. Um, we're going to move on now to Deb McCormick uh, with EAP and FIDAP. Hi, my name is Deb McCormick and I am also a flight attendant. Um, I've been doing union work for 30 plus years. Uh, my area of expertise is EAP and also I am the coordinator for the Flight Attendant Drug and Alcohol Program, which is known as FDAP. Um, if you go onto the APFA website, you will see that you're able to easily able to access the FDAP website. And what is FDAP? Well, it is a program to to assist flight attendants should they need substance abuse or their family members. Uh, we also afford education as well as cutting edge information regarding treatment. So 
we also have um, Okay, excuse me, I got cut off. So also there is for Philadelphia, we also have EAP reps uh, that are available to anybody that needs assistance at any time. And they are Kathy Bedrosian, myself, Maureen Wojak, Michael Gibson, and Bill Ibera. So feel free to give them a call. You can access them anytime. If they do, do not pick up, please feel free to call, you know, anyone, the next person. We also strongly recommend on the back of your insurance card, we have uh, Aetna, which is our behavioral health uh, organization that manages our, that area of our insurance. And we're entitled up to four free sessions per issue, per calendar year. And so if you are in need of assistance, you have three options here. So you can call into FDAP, you can call into the APFA EAP line and reach somebody that way, or you can call the back of your insurance card. And we know right now there is a lot of stress out there. Um, and so we need to be mindful and be able to try to reach out when we need it or or really try to take time for ourselves that's about it josh thank you great and uh one thing i'd like to say real quick is while this is up we encourage you to take a screenshot of uh all of these contacts so that you have them handy um if you ever need them right okay. and pass them on to any flying partner that you have and as like i said if you're dealing with a family issue please reach out to us. Great. OK, um, moving on, we're going to we have quite a few questions that were submitted, so um, we'll go ahead and take those. It doesn't seem I think Kim's going to take this one. In. It doesn't seem Philly is an important part of the future planet AA. We have lost so much flying since the pandemic that has not come back. While other airports are packed, Philly is often dead. Has the company given the union any indication on what they plan for the future of Philadelphia? Um, not to my knowledge. I mean, we don't have any additional information and I'm not sure where they think Philly's been dead because we, we're at the airport almost every single day and it is packed just like every airport right now. So no, I don't have any additional information on Philadelphia as far as what their business model is. Um, as far as I know, it's going to stay as status quo. I don't know if Marty and Jeff have gotten any additional information on base statuses or flying. Um, I know they're still waiting on a lot of airplanes, so that is kind of a bit of a problem, but I, I do not have that information, any information at all on that. Kim, I know you also mentioned that there was going to be some sort of flight service town hall today. Yeah, um, it, no, it's the company town hall. Company <laughs> town hall. Really so that'd be a great question for them there. It's a system wide. I was in mobile CCI. I saw it uh, this morning when I was sifting through there. So the company is also going to be conducting a town hall. I think it's at three central, maybe two central, three o'clock, something like that. OK. Um, Josh, I can see a question about Beth Williams leaving Charlotte. Yep, we'll, we're going to go to that one next. Okay. But before we take the next question, I'm actually going to go to uh, Tracy Montanari real quick so she can say hi. I know when we started the session earlier, she was in a meeting. Hey, Tracy. Hi, hi there. I'm so glad to see everybody logged on here. That's it. Great. Ask your question. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Tracy. All right, so next question we have. With Beth Williams now going to Charlotte, has APFA gotten any word on if they will be replacing her? It seems that not having a base leader during the busy summer months is yet another example of AA giving up on Philly and what the future holds. Um, Beth will still be in Philly until the end of the month, and I actually did just speak to uh, Sam Mayher yesterday. He is the regional director for um, a few bases in Philly is one of them about um, her replacement. He told me they are down to the final two candidates and 
He they'll be conducting uh, final interviews later this week or uh, beginning of next week, and they hope to be making an announcement um, prior to the end of the month. And uh, but I have absolutely no idea who, who, what, why, what. Yeah, I got nothing on that one. So we'll see. We'll see what they do. What was it? Was there another part of that question? Uh, the next, let's see. Um, where did it go? Nope, that was it. OK. Next question. Is there any news on the employee parking lots? Um, no, but we have not had any reports in at least two months of any issues reported from flight attendants. So I, I don't know if it's things are still happening. I know the times I've been in and out of the lot, I've seen the security multiple times. Um, but I, I, we've not gotten any reports, so I, I assumed it was getting a little bit better. However, they do need to um, fix those gates because I don't believe they're still, I think they're still broken. But I don't have any update on the, uh, as far as uh, vandalism and whatnot in the lot. It, I think it's subsided somewhat, but I'm sure it's still happening. We just haven't had any flight attendants as a victim. But if you have a problem or you see a problem, please let me know. Thanks, Kim. Um, next question. Uh, but actually, these next couple of questions are all along the same lines. Um, with the recent elimination of courtesy calls to notify reserves of assignments, has there been an uptick in report of assignment acknowledgement not registering? And what is APFA recommending the flight attendant group do to protect themselves when acknowledging the assignments? I think uh, Marty and Jeff actually touched on this already, if you want to touch on it again. Sure, um, it, like we suggested, um, we are recommending that everybody use crew portal whenever possible to acknowledge their assignments until we can uh, until the company is able to figure out what's going on, because the majority of the issues that we have seen with the acknowledgement got not going through has been through mobile CCI. Okay. All right. Um, second part, new hires would benefit from a PBS bidding class. They are given an overviewed class during training, but the training gets out by the time they come online to avoid mistakes. Well, like we mentioned earlier, um, we did do a couple sessions for the new hires. I know um, they get a class in their initial training, and uh, I believe at the base, John and Kim, if y'all want to touch on that, y'all go over some of that too, right? Uh, John, you can take that. Yeah, uh, at the initial indoctrinations, we do go over um, in a simplified detail how to uh, manage a road a bid and how to enter a road a bid. We also talk about road to D and some of the other issues about being on reserve. We also do uh, show how to acknowledge road assignments. Um, we talk a little bit about positive contact, what that means. Um, uh, I, I guess what I, the one of the things I would like to reiterate and emphasize is use crew portal when you're acknowledging a rota assignment. And I believe it was either Marty or uh, uh, Jeff who said that it's possible if you can take do a screen record of actually acknowledging your assignment that helps tremendously. That is black and white proof that you did everything correctly on your end. Yes. Um, uh, that's really about all I can think of to say about what we give as instruction in the indoctrination on the first day. Well, I think you do touch on PBS a little bit for those. We do, we do. And what, what I do, I talk, uh, depending on the time of the month, if it's an indoctrination where the, uh, uh, the new hires have the ability to bid for the next month, what I do is I, I, I talk in a little bit of detail about the, um, off day patterns and the availability patterns and where to find the videos to watch the videos and i, I really i do I, I can't emphasize enough watch those instructional videos because they really go into detail about how to bid your off days correctly in pbs great um our last question before we end today 
If straight reserve is not an option in negotiations, what is being looked at to lower the seniority of flight attendants being on reserve? Is straight reserve being looked at to be lengthened to over one year? Brian, you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, we are looking at uh, extending the one year straight reserve um, as an increase. Um, Again, as I noted earlier, uh, the reserve section um, is still in internal discussions. It has not made it to the table as of yet. Um, and uh, that uh, the length of time has not been um, hammered out as of yet, but um, we are looking at extending the straight reserve beyond the one year aspect. Um, and again, uh, we are reaching out through various asp uh, uh, aspects such as the uh, um, hotlines, um, our emails we hear from our membership on a regular basis in addition to um, any of our surveys to get a feel for where our membership is on, on this position. Um, we also have uh, extensive discussions with, um, of course, our contract and uh, scheduling chairs as well as our board members um, uh, and how we uh, are looking at this. Um, but as soon as we get uh, something uh, more concrete, that is something we will share with you, but um, know that we are looking at it and taking uh, the reserve situation as it stands very seriously. We know that uh, uh, many uh, uh, flight attendants are concerned with the number of years that reserve is currently being uh, reached um, and uh, we are we are taking all of that into consideration. Great, thank you Brian. Well with that we have two comments not questions that were submitted. Um, thank you Deb McCormick for all the work you do. One of the most compassionate and empathetic people I have ever had the pleasure of working with. Thank you Peter for that comment. And then a big thank you to Kim for all of her hard work in Philly. We appreciate all that she does for us and we are very lucky to have her working for us. Thank you for that comment as well. Um, I think that's a really great way to wrap up the session today. We really appreciate all of the department um, representatives who joined us today. We know you have meetings all day, every day, and you have a lot of work to do. So we really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to help with this town hall. And a special thank you to the uh, Philly base leadership. We really appreciate the work that you do for our flight attendants. And thank you for hosting this for your flight attendants. I'll hand it to Kim to close us out. Um, yes, I want to reiterate. I want to thank the flight attendants who've joined, the flight attendants who have submitted questions. We appreciate um, that. Um, I also really want to thank all of the um, leadership that took time out of their day to participate in this to provide good information for our flight attendants. And if you think of a question afterwards, you know, you can certainly email us. Each department has um, email addresses. Um, you can find it all on the website that you can reach out to them or reach out to us and we'll be happy to get those answered for you, but I do appreciate all your hard work. We know it's it's trying times right now still, and we're we're all doing the best we can to navigate through it. And uh, we appreciate all you do as flight attendants every day out there on the line. And uh, please continue to file reports, getting, uh, you know, letting us know, you know, so we know what uh, what's important to you. So thank you all and thank everybody who who joined today, leadership and uh, flight attendants. Uh, it's really appreciated, thank you. With that, uh, we will end the session. I hope everyone has an amazing day, thank you.